So today we are going to be going over Microsoft To Do. It is a tool that I absolutely love and I'm going to convince you to love it too. So let's get into it, y'all. All right, everyone, let's get into it. First things first is if you are using the desktop version, you can absolutely use tasks. It is very similar to the online version on the web. I am going to show you both, but while we're here in the desktop version, let me show you what this looks like. So I can simply click on the email and drag it down here into my tasks and let it go. Once I do that, it's going to embed the email into the task and I can modify it from here. So maybe I wanna change this to say, read the October, October newsletter. Once I set a date for it, so let's just say, I'm not gonna get it till, till Friday and I wanna make sure that I do it by Monday. I can put on here that it's not started. I'm gonna put it as a low priority, but I wanna set myself as a reminder on Saturday. So I'm gonna go over here to the 17th and let's say I want to get reminded at 10 a.m. Then I can go ahead and hit save and close. And then if I click into my tasks, then you can see it right here, read the October newsletter. So really easy way to simply drag and drop in the desktop version. The next thing I wanna show you in the desktop version is that you can be in your emails and see your tasks at the same time. So if you click at the top where it says view, then go over here to where it says the to bar, to do bar, select tasks, and it's going to populate it right here on the right hand side. So as you are working through your tasks or your actions throughout the day, you can leave it right here and always have visibility to it. Another way that you can see your tasks if you're using multiple monitors is just simply right click on it and say open in a new window and it will open up a second Outlook window for you and you can move it over to a different monitor. So really easy way for visibility. Okay, so let's talk about flagging your email. A really simple way, rather than clicking on it, is just to right click on the flag and then choose if you need to do it today, tomorrow, this week, next week, or you can create a custom date. I do wanna call out, you can see right here, it says team information. Now, when I, clicked and flagged this email, it does not technically create a tasks. It just shows up. If I click on it, I'm only going to see the email. I'm not going to see a task with a due date or anything like that. So that's a key difference to notice if you're dragging it down here into your tasks versus you're just simply seeing it over here. Another easy way to grab a task is if you think of something, you can just simply type it in right here. And then you can see that once I've typed it in, it put it in automatically right there. So really easy way for you to keep up with your tasks in the desktop version. Now, since in the Microsoft environment, our task list on our desktop is also populated and connected to both the web version and the online version, I wanna show you what that looks like. So we popped on over here to the web version. I'm already logged into my Outlook. You can do that at portal.office.com. And there's a really great integration here between Outlook and To Do. So let's just say, for example, that this is something that I wanted to create a task from. I can sim simply click on it and drag it over. If you notice, I can either add it as an event or as a task. So I'm gonna let that go. And then it's right here. If I would like to change that, I'm gonna say, so now I have identified that it's something that I need to do and then I'm going to mark it as important. So you can easily get over and see all of your tasks all right here, or you can click down here under manage all tasks. Okay, so now we popped on over to the online version of To Do, and I just wanna orient you to a couple key points. So over on the left are gonna be smart lists of all of your tasks. So let's go ahead and create a task that we need to onboard a new employee. We'll name her Sarah. So if I click on this, if you notice over here on the right, I have lots of different options to help me prioritize the work. So let's add a few steps. So maybe I need to order a computer. So you can go ahead and just simply add as many subtasks as you need to and then mark them off one by one. 
Then if I need to create a due date, obviously I need to get all of this done before her first day of work. So I'm gonna click on next week. Then I wanna add it to my day for today so that it's a high priority for me. Then I can even add a category if I'd like, and let's just say that it's business. If I wanted to add a, add a file, I could simply click on that. It would open up File Explorer, and then if I wanted to take a note. Okay, so now I have all the information that I need in one spot. If we look over here onto the left, under important, if I really wanna focus and be really intentional about my day, I can look at the important items that I've listed so that I'm not seeing everything else that is listed in my task option. Next, under plan, it's going to show me everything that actually has a due date. Anything that I have not assigned to a date is filtered out. Next, under assigned to me, these are things that are assigned to me from someone else, whether it be through Outlook tasks, to do, or on planner. When you're on the web version, a flagged email can be created to a task. It just doesn't show that in the same way on the desktop version. If I wanna look at the email in Outlook, I just simply click on open in Outlook and it's going to open up the email for me. And then finally, we have tasks. So these are all of our tasks that we have compiled. And if I want to sort them, I can simply do that right here. I have several different options. If I wanna to go to the creation date, I can. Another really cool thing is that you can actually change your list options. So if you want to change your theme, you could click on that and then change it to purple or green or whatever color that you would like. And then another thing that I think is really great is if you are someone who likes pen and paper, you can actually print your list. I actually turn this off. I will turn off the notes and click print. And then this is the preview. And so if you are somebody who enjoys the pen and paper, then this is a great way for you to see this all in one place. So let's talk a little bit about creating new lists. So for this example, I am having a holiday party and there are a few people that are helping me pull everything together. So because I want to share and have a collaborative space, on the very top, right, I can click share and then I can create an invitation link to email someone. So I'm going to create this link. I'm going to invite them via email. Okay, so now I have invited a few people. The other thing that you can also do is right click on it and then under your sharing options. So let's just say I wanted to share um, the Q4 new hires. I could right click and say share list and then same thing, create an invitation link. So once you have invited other people to your list, and you can tell that because there's this little shared list icon right here, if I want to assign a specific task, so plan giveaways, I would go down here and click on assign to, and I'm gonna assign this to Nicholas. I wanna give him clear directions, so I want it done. I'm gonna choose click a date, and I'm gonna say I need it to be done by the 22nd. And hit save. So I'm gonna put this under a category. I'm just going to pick one. I'm gonna say medium priority. So not only is it categorized, but it also has a very clear date and who it's assigned to. So I could do that for each and every one of those. And I could also add steps if I chose to. This is a great way to manage group tasks. It's so easy and accessible to everyone on all their devices. So let's just say I need to create a, a new list. So I'm gonna create a new list, and this one is gonna say Q1 new hires, specify for 2022. So rather than having these separated, I might want them to go all together. So I'm gonna drag these groups together. So here is my Q4 new hires, and then this is my Q1 new hires. So now that I have grouped my list together, if I wanted to collapse them, I would just click that icon and I could expand or collapse them. If I wanted to rearrange my listings, I could just click on it and drag it up wherever I'd like it. So now my holiday party list is above my employee onboarding. So this is a really easy way for you to organize the information in the way that you would like to see it. I do wanna highlight, if you notice the holiday party and the new employee onboarding list that we created on the web, if I click into the desktop, I also actually have these right here on the left. So I have Q4 new hires, the holiday party, and the Q1 new hires. The other thing that I wanna highlight is that when you right click on a task, you do have a couple other options. 
So for example, if you wanted to move a task very easily over to, let's just say this needs to go to the Q1 new hires, I can do that right here if I didn't want to drag and drop it. So there are a few other options available to you when you right click. The other option that I really like is if you have a repetitive task that you do over and over that maybe has several subtasks. So if we go over to the holiday party and I wanted to right click on that and then I wanted to duplicate the list. So maybe I wanna give the same thing, same information, but it's a different party. So let's just say I'm gonna rename it and this is our spring get together. So I still am, I still have the same basic tasks without having to recreate them over and over. Now let's talk about reoccurring tasks. Many of us have tasks that need to happen every week or every month. So an easy way to do that is to click on add a task. And then I'm going to say send out the newsletter. And then once I click on it, I can actually click down here under repeat. And then I can decide how often I want it to remind me. So I'm going to click under custom and I'm going to say every two weeks on Tuesday. So now if I wanted to, I could even add a category. And then one really cool thing that you can do is actually search through hashtags. So if you have something that's related to, I don't know, communications, or in this case, a newsletter, I'm just going to put comms. All right, so let me give myself another task. And let's just say I'm going to complete the article for the newsletter. And I'm actually gonna tag that one comms as well. Okay, so now, as you can see, there's now a hyperlink. So if I click on it, it's going to pull up all of the emails that, are, that have that hashtag. It's a really easy way for you to pull together similar tasks in one super quick view. And lastly, I wanna talk about my day. So my day, the thing that is really unique about it is that your day is refreshed every single day. So, so many people say I flag so many emails and I can't get a grasp of what I'm supposed to do today. So my day is the one list that's going to empower you to see everything. To see things in my day, you actually have to click on it. So I'm gonna go under the new employee onboarding under Q4 and I'm going to click on it and I'm gonna click down here to add it to my day. So once I've done that, I can go back here to my day and I can see these are the two tasks that are specific toward today. So under suggestions, Outlook is going to send you some things. Clearly this has a today due date. So it's thinking I might need to add it to my day, but I might have already completed it. So I'm gonna mark it off as done. And that lovely sound happens when you mark it off. I love that sound. Let's just say for this one, I actually do really need to get it done today. So I'm gonna hit the plus symbol. And as you can see right here, it's gonna move it over. So the My Day View is a really great way for you to focus in and only see the things that are going to impact today. I hope that I have convinced you to love Microsoft To Do just as much as I do. If you would like more content like this, please subscribe, like, and share. So we'll see you in the next video.